Hi there YouTube, here's my Toyota Matrix 2008 model and this is the problem of my Toyota Matrix. That's what happens when you don't pay attention and back up into a park bench. When I shopped around at local body shops to get this fixed, they all quoted me between $1,000 and $1,600 and they wanted to keep my car in the shop for at least three days. So I called this guy to fix my problem. This is Gerald and he runs a mobile body shop from the back of his pickup truck. Gerald said he would come to me, fix my car for a fraction of the price and be done in a day. So here he is and I'm going to follow him around with a camera to watch and learn. Okay we're putting plastic, what's that for? Just to keep some of the dust off. Okay. Okay, so that was stage one. So what's next? What's next is now I use a uni spotter, put some tabs on it so I can pull the dent out. Yeah, but that's what they use in the body shops too, right? This thing. This thing or the, a cart. The carts about quite a bit. These are, you know, 300 bucks. The cart's about 1200 What's a cart? It has a similar thing, but you use a... Uh, the machine actually will kind of tab to it with a lever and you just go in. Oh, okay.
nice. That's a lot less work than taking the inside off and banging it out. And you can't always get to the spots that you need to. And you can work, as you see the dent moving, you can work the areas that need it. Whereas if you're inside, even if you had somebody in there, it's not going to... Looking pretty good already. So this is the uni spotter here. And that was the grinding wheel. So what's that you're doing there? Just want to make sure that there's no high spots and it's all oh, pretty good. Okay. The field's pretty good, but I... It shows you where any high spots are. It's just a straight edge, right? Uh-huh. Because any filler you have about a quarter, you don't want to be any more than a quarter of an inch on the, if you're going to do any fill work. So. Right. So if there's a high spot, you bang it back in, right? Yeah, or, or try to get it down. And any any major low spot too, that's beyond filling. Uh huh. Then you you pull it out. Because you can't get it doing it this way. You can't get it without using some filler yeah you can't get it perfect but you can see even the like where it was before it's it's within within your margins to use a little bit of filler just to smooth it out and then prime it I've done some really bad dents that I've had to use a use it use a tree or a pole and a come along work for a company that did this uh, mobile but mostly doing it for dealerships and almost strictly just bumper covers right um, I went out on my own and uh, because I'm a licensed auto body tech I have the experience to pull out a dent anywhere on the vehicle and blend it um, so I just transferred that you need to be licensed to do uh, this I mean if you hadn't bat didn't have a license where you w could you not have this business I mean Really? That's the, the that's the problem with the mobile industry. Wow. Um, most of them don't have are only trained to do front bumper covers. Right, right. Um, it's reasonably easy to do a front bumper cover color match. Usually, yeah. good on them anyways. So you have a lot of leeway. Yeah. Whereas if you're doing a side of a and it's mostly used cars, so um, at a used car dealership you look at and you buy it. Whereas I work for a customer like yourself, you want it to look good. There's a big difference, right? So it has to look, has to look good. Um, but yeah, that's the problem with the industry. There's a lot of them aren't licensed okay. auto body techs. Whereas myself, I've done the four-year training and yeah. I'm a licensed guy. That being said, there isn't really a licensing for a mobile. Yeah. Cars. Okay, so what are we doing now? So now, basically, I've just got to sand it, uh, just so any of the filler will stick. Okay. So I sand out the spot. And then, uh, then we'll have to lay some filler on it. Okay, so what do you use? To, what do you use to sand it? I'm going to use an 80 grit uh, sandpaper on a 80 grit electrical orbital. Okay. Um, just to sand it down, and then uh, then I got to put some filler on it. seen that pop in too. 
popped in. Okay. Okay, so that was an 80 grit. So what was this, the first thing you used down here, this thing? That's just a grinder. Just a grinder, yeah. okay. So actually, it works as a polisher. I have one for a grinder and I have one for a polisher. Just a Makita. So it popped back in now. Just a little bit. Okay, so what are we doing here? We're grabbing the paint code. Just grabbing the paint code. And that is usually right it's there. It's usually found here, especially uh, on most manufacturers. Some are found in the glove box, and then others, uh, like your Volkswagen, uh, Audi, are found in the back. And then a lot of your Japanese makes, uh, like your uh, Nissans uh, and the Korean uh, one, are also found in the engine compartment. They, so it can be found all over, but the majority are found right there. Okay. And this happens to be one E3. Okay, so this is what you use? Yeah, just a little bit of body filler and then uh, yeah. putty over top afterwards. That smells just like the fiberglass compound. Right? It is, basically. Yeah. It's a fiberglass base with basically what it is is it's uh, a fiberglass resin yeah. with talc powder. Oh, okay. That's all filling yeah, is. I used to build, my wife and I used to build uh, white water kayaks. Oh, okay, yeah. And it smelled just like it. <laughs> yeah, it, it's just, that's because it uses a, a fiberglass resin. 
almost all filler is that way, especially the hardened stuff. Yeah. Like it, that has a hardness. And then there's some some fillers that have a fiber actual strands of fiberglass in it. Yeah. Um, this is not that. So that's for patching up holes or stuff. Yeah, more where you're concerned with uh, either uh, if you're using it on fiberglass or if you're uh, concerned about a, a water getting into it. As far as like right. AKA rust repairs are often done that because it's more of a waterproof. So I noticed you didn't sort of wash off the dust there. So that doesn't matter, right? No, I wiped it down uh, just with a rag. That's good enough. Yeah. So now you put what's it called? The filler, right? Yeah, body filler. Yeah. And uh, so that's going to dry now, and then you put another one, or yeah, how, I'll how does it work? Sand that off, and what I'll use, I'll use my orbital to just give it a rough sand off, and then I'll put another coat on them, block it. And then potentially might have to put another, a third coat just to make sure it's good um, after it's blocked. And then a putty coat just to fill any of the pinholes that you'll Okay, get. so what's blocked when you say it blocks? Just, what do you I'll mean? I'll use a, a, a sanding block. Oh, okay, to, uh, yeah, okay. Paint it. Or I mean to uh, block sand it out. Right. So I'll rough it out with my orbital and then I'll uh, block sand it uh, the second coat. And then there might be a few little spots here and there that I'll okay. have to be a third coat on. And then... Uh, so how long does that have to sit now? It varies. So the sun's not on it, so it's, it's in a shade. So it'll take probably oh, 10, 15 minutes or so. Okay. I can uh, do anything with it. And then uh, I'll have to uh, put another uh, coat of filler after that. Okay. And so we're using the 80 grit again, and we're right? Using 80 grit. Yeah, 80 grit uh, orbital just to rough it down. I don't finish in that just because you can't get it uh, smooth because you have a tendency using an orbital to uh, dig down but I just want to rough it out and then I'll block my next uh, okay. next coat. All right. So now I put another coat of filler on there, and then, uh, then we'll block that one down. Okay. After that's dry. So the second coat of filler will basically take care of these. Yeah, it'll take care of any of the minor imperfections there, and uh, okay. then I'll block that out so I know it's it's uh, level. Uh huh. If you don't block it out, then you have a tendency to, to get leave the low spots. You're creating a low spot. It seems smooth, but okay, uh, it'll create warbles and if you don't block it. So what are we doing with the water? I'll actually wet sand down everything. I, I, I prefer wet sanding than dry sanding. It just keeps a lot of the dust down. So wouldn't it save a lot of work to do it with a machine instead of by hand? It would, uh, 
it's quicker, but it's you don't get as good a job. You don't. Okay. No, you, you gotta block everything. I roughed it out. Right. The first stage. You can use a machine for just because you're not particularly concerned at getting it totally, totally smooth. But if you use the machine the whole way, you're apt to cut down a lot of areas that you need filler. Right. And it, it, it doesn't. It doesn't do as, as good a job. Okay. So you're better off at blocking it. For the I see. From this stage and on. Um, some people will use machines, but... So that's still the 80 grit you're using there? Yeah, this is still 80 grit. If you end up going finer, you end up not doing as good a job. So you got to go to use the course. It cuts more even. Okay. And then you work your way down after you have it blocked out pretty good. Then you work your way down to. Uh, now you usually time it into uh, about 220, or even you go over it afterwards with the uh, 400. Okay. Prime it, and then you have to block that out as well. But if you start with a fine sandpaper, it'll take you longer, and you'll end up smoothing it off, but it won't be flat, a flat surface. Right. You'll have the same issue that if you're using orbital, same kind of thing. Uh-huh. It'll be smooth, but it won't be straight. Well, it looks pretty smooth by now. Pretty good. One, two low spots, but other than that, it's pretty good. Okay, so what do you do with the low spots? You the low spots, I'll do another little bit of a skim coat. Okay. And then I'll block that out again, and then I'll do a putty coat, and then uh, we'll be ready to prime. All right. Just do another skim coat over it, and yep. just gotta wait for it to dry, and then uh, skim coat it, and then uh, should be onto the putty coat. Okay, two more low spots. One right here, and then one right there. Okay, so now we're on to coat number three, right? So this is not the, the highest quality filler, no, right? No, this is not the highest quality of filler. A higher quality of filler will have a little bit more flow. Okay. Um, but your cost of, of the filler is about 60 bucks a can to 20. Right. Okay. And so... It does the same thing. It's the same thing, but it doesn't flow, so you have a little bit more pinholes and such. Okay, but you work that out with the primer then at the end? with the putty and then the primer. The pu okay. Okay, so we're sanding down the third coat. Still using 80 grit, right? Still using 80 grit. 80 grit to 180 grit, go over it, getting it ready uh, so I can just final putty it. Um, basically have it all down now. There's just basically pinholes left that'll need to be filled with some putty. Okay, so 80 was first and then 80 180. Was first and I switched to 180 uh, and then I'll putty it and then I'll switch probably down to a 400 grit. Uh, to uh, go over the putty spots. Okay. Just because I'm just, I'm not really using any filler yeah. uh, to fill, it's just to fill any minor imperfections uh, is what the putty will do. It doesn't do any, as far as filling any low spots, it's all all done. It's just to fill any of the minor imperfections that the primer won't fill. Okay, so what do we have here? This is just a putty that I'll use just to fill the pinholes. Okay, so what's it called? It's just a spot. Okay, Evercoat, Everglaze, and Spot Putty. Okay, so what did you say? It's only good for it's that really purpose? It's really only good for uh, using for uh, filling any pinholes and minor spots. It's not for designed for filling any kind of dents or, or big spots. So how many layers of those do you put on? One. Just on One, and then I'll... Usually, if you need another one, it'll be after primer. 
Okay. Let's say you missed a spot or whatever happens, you have a pinhole. Still okay, so what does the primer do? The primer will fill any minor scratches, and it's kind of more of a safe to make sure you got all the spots too. Right. So it'll take it anywhere your minor sanding scratches will fill, and uh, just gives you another thing to block out and make sure you got it all. So if you just have, let's say you just have a few scratches in your paint, right? Can you just fill that up with primer? Oftentimes you'll just sand it out. Okay, so we're going at this now with what? Another yeah, sandpaper? Yeah, I switched to a 400 grit sandpaper and sand that down with 400 grit. So is there any anything to it that they have different colors, those masking tapes? Uh, just to keep them, uh, once again, it, there's just different qualities. Okay. Um, the beige is a poor quality, the green is um, pop quality, and the yellow is more of your mid-grade. The price is another it changes quite a bit you know you're, you're right. about four bucks a roll if it's green um, this one here for me is about two dollars and fifty cents and the cheap stuff is about two bucks and this is a lot better than the cheap stuff and it's not that much different from this in the green other than the price in my opinion I like to prime at about 400 grit and it's not doing any really fill anyways so it's just to take minor sand scratches so this way more comfortable at priming over top of the 400 grit than, than the coarser. So when you just sand the coat, paint coat directly to take scratches out what do you use for that? Also 400? 400 yeah. I think I went to a 180 now you can switch to a 400 grit. You don't want to go right from 80 to 400. It just won't cut. You'll still have some deep, really deep scratches in it. Wipe it down again. Oh, well, already looks a lot better than this morning. Mm, that's probably debatable. <laughs> but the dent's not there. The dent's not there, that's right. So I'm switching to 1500 grit and I'm going to 1500 grit the whole uh, quarter panel. Okay. Uh, just to get it ready for priming. And then the 1500 grit um, clear actually can go right over top of it. So it doesn't really even need to be painted over top. So it enables me to blend the whole area. Okay. But it also allows the primer to stick to any area that doesn't necessarily need primer, but gets primed, it'll stick to. Okay. So here we're going. If a person wanted to, a person could even polish it back to a shine after you use 1500 grit. It gives a, a surface for paint to stick to. So the 1500, that's what you would also use on your headlights, is what you said, right? Yeah, 1500 on, on headlights. Anything that you uh, don't necessarily need color on, but say if you had a deep scratch or something that you wanted to try to polish out, um, you could take 1500 grit to it. Um, just stand down the clear coat, give it a polish because it'll still shine um, everywhere you've, you've uh, used 1500 grit. Anything coarser than that uh, is a little bit too coarse to uh, be able to polish. You can sometimes get away with a thousand grit, right? Um, but it's reasonably risky too. So basically, whenever you paint, you want to rough it up with 1500. Yeah, you could do 2,000 grit, but there's no particular advantage unless you're doing black, which black is a little bit more finicky. And Give the whole car a wet sand down with 1,500 grit, and then re-clear the whole car. 
then just wet sand it all down again to 15, 2,000 grit and polish it back to a shine. Okay. That's how you get your show car finish. But it takes a lot of time. Sounds like a lot of work. And doing something like that is usually about five to ten thousand dollars extra. So, is there any special things to know about the masking? Uh, no, I just have a basically just other than the fact that I did a rolled edge right uh, from the quarter panel uh, to the door, just right. so you have a it, it gives a softer edge. Whereas if you did it the other way around, you have a, a, a worse line. Uh, this way, you avoid getting a line. And I did the same thing right along the quarter panel there too, um, just to soften the edge. Okay. You want to stay away from the sharp lines. And easier to tell if the thing's been painted or not. Uh huh. It doesn't get rid of it 100%, but that's the way you do it. Put a tape just a little bit beyond where it will be eventually painted, just so I don't have a primered edge that'll be right up against where the paint will go. This way, all the primer will be covered. If you end up not doing that, then you'll end up with a potential of a, a gray edge where the primer was right along that area. Okay. And I'll do the same thing down here as well, just so I don't have a primered edge. And I'll sand right up to there and sand that edge out. But because this rest of this masking paper will and tape will be left there uh, for when I paint. So if I didn't do that, I would end up with a gray edge. It wasn't good enough to leave the first plastic no. because of the dust or because what? Because of the dust. There was a lot of dust. That's why I covered it a bit at the beginning, just so I cut down on having any dust on it. That's the worst. That's the, the hardest challenge. Um, as well as painting outside that you have is dust. And because I made a whole bunch of dust on that, um, your chances of having dust in the paint job are pretty high if you didn't, if I left that plastic on there. Okay. And if I didn't plastic it, then the whole car would be covered in dust and then another uh, create dust. I mean, that's, especially being mobile, that's the hardest, most challenging thing is dust in the air. Ever coat. I use a self etching primer. Um, that way it'll stick to any bare metal or anything that uh, is on there. Um, dries pretty fast. Uh, that's why I use just a spray bomb. Anything else, typically you'd have to clean a gun and it would take longer to, uh, to dry. Okay. This stuff for what I use. I don't need a lot of fill anyways because I I uh, use some spot putty to fill any of the minor imperfections. So, um, it's not really used for any really hard fill. It's just to take any of the sanding scratches and just make sure it's good to go. So once the primer's on, does that have to be sanded down again? Yeah, and I'll put uh, probably about three coats of primer on there, and then I'll have to sand that down again. 800 grit and then 1500 grit, wherever uh, uh, I just want to blend the paint out. Okay, we got a bug here. Okay, but you say it's not a problem, yeah, right? Yeah, I mean, that's one of your potential problems and hard things of doing it outside mobile is that you can potentially get a bug in it. Um, not a big deal as long as it doesn't happen in your first, first coat of uh, clear. Anything else you can fix. Like this here, I have to sand it down anyways so it'll come out. Um, but in your first coat of clear, basically anything that gets in that first coat, you're almost stuck with. Um, some card colors are a lot harder than others. If it's white, then obviously the bug's going to show up a lot. Um, on a color like this, yeah, probably wouldn't be that noticeable once you have it polished out and you pick it out and, and put another coat of clear on it. This one I'm going to be spraying 
with a water base. Right. So it doesn't have the same fill as, as a solvent base where you can put on heavier coats. So this helps it along a, a fair bit. And you can see it's already dry to the touch, that first coat. Okay, so we're on the third coat of primer here. Third coat, and then... Uh, Is that usually pretty much it? Three coats? Yeah, three coats. Usually, I don't see any big problems, so... Um, three coats, and then uh, we'll sand that down, and then it'll be ready for paint. What do we have here? Uh, clean it out with some lacquer thinner. Lacquer thinner, all right. And then after that, I'll have to clean it up with water. What kind of nozzle do you use on those things? This one here uh, is a 3.4 tip. No, sorry, a 1.3 tip. 1.3 tip. Yeah. Okay. 3.0 tip would be a pretty big tip. But a 1.3. And I use this gun for both my base and my clear coat. water. How much? It's about 20%. 20%. Okay, this is the 1500 again, right? This is the 1500 again? Uh, no, this is actually 800 grit. Okay, this is 800 now. So I'll sand it with 800 and then I'll go over it after I uh, sand it down to 800 to 15. So we're ready for the paint, huh? Ready for the paint. So what's the funnel for? Just to take, especially with the water-based paint, or it doesn't mix perfectly well, so it takes any clumps out. Okay. If you didn't, you'd have a clump go through, and then you would see it as a clump on the thing, or look like a dust speck. This takes, takes that out. Really, especially with the water base, I find that you, you end up having a lot of, a lot of, ends up being a, a color that will be dried or something. Okay. So you end up with like a, a blue speck or a, right. a different colored speck in it just because. Because there was a clump a, in it. A clump, yeah. And you don't get that so much with the solvent base, but with the water base, it really seems to, seems to be an issue. You're going to be putting thin coats on, right? Yeah, there will be a lot of thin coats. Uh, whereas if I was using a solvent, uh, the paint coats would be a lot, uh, I'd put on a lot thicker. But this will go on a lot, um, a lot thinner. It'll actually go on the wrong color and dry to the right color. Okay. You, see, uh, it, you don't know what color you have until it's dry. Um, that's the way the, the water base is, just oh. like your house paint. In those areas where you still see it purple, it's still drying. Okay. Some of the darker areas where you see it, it's almost the right 
somewhat in the right colour, even though it's overlaying. Um, it's the you can see where it's dry. process a little bit. I'll uh, use a heat gun to dry it, especially with the heat in a little bit of the shade. It's pretty quick here, so just needs the help uh, drying before I can put on another coat. Okay. It's a little bit heavier than uh, I did the first one, so it would take a little bit longer to dry if I didn't use, uh, use a heat gun to help it along a bit. Code number three. Here we go again with the heat gun, drying coat number three. Now the water blends better with solvent, but you have to know how to do it, because you can't... If you're blending with solvent, you blend by seeing it, so you can see as you go, well, you know, it's blended out nice, it looks good. But with the water, you don't know what you have till it's dry, so you can't just blend it by eye, you just blend it on how you know it. But you can get away with a lot more with the water because they're better color matches. Okay. So you can do a harder blend or spot that would be harder on a, on a difficult color and get away with it easier than you can with the solvent based uh, color system. Okay, on to drying coat number four. Coat number five. Coat number five drying. Coat number six. Wet coats, which is fairly and my coats are, that'd be the equivalent of three coats that okay. you'd usually put on. Okay. Whereas I put uh, six. Six, yeah, I counted six. six. So, what is this now? Just mixing up some clear coat to uh, go over top of that. Clear coat. All right, what do you have here? To make it good and shiny. Omni. And reducer. What's the little bottle? And the hardener. Oh, that's the hardener, okay. Looking good? Dry enough? I think it looks dry, so I think we can uh, go ahead and clear it.
That's it? No, that's just the first coat. Okay, so several coats of that one as well? Two, maybe three over top of that. We're on to clear coat number two. Well, we have a bug that got stuck on the second clear coat, but Gerald thinks it's going to be okay because one clear coat is still coming and he can polish it out afterwards. Coat number three now. After the body work was done, Gerald helped me with some minor touch-up jobs like this one here. I had a pretty bad scratch in there from a parking lot at a mall. And I used one of these paint sticks or paint pens to touch it up, but I put too much on it with a brush. So Gerald just took some lacquer thinner and wiped off the excess paint. And it turned out real nice, looking real good again. I also had a whole bunch of rock chips in the front that Gerald fixed up, but instead of using the little brush that comes with most of these touch-up paint pens, Gerald just used a paper clip to dip into the paint and just had enough paint on that paper clip tip to fill out the little holes, which worked really well. So you fill them up like that and then you polish them? No. Actually, this is usually a lot. I use it after I polish. If I have to go around it after I polish, because when I polish, I'll probably take some of that paint out. Okay, so if I want to fill a rock chip myself, then that's what I do, what you're doing yep. right now. And leave it. And just leave it? Yep. Okay, we're moving on to the final stage here now, the polishing of the whole car. But before that, Gerald's just going to be sanding down the paint job he did with a 1500 grit. And that's just to remove any minor imperfections. I guess mainly because we did get a bug into one of the clear coats there. And by sanding it down like this, uh, he'll have a smooth surface, take care of the bug. And it'll look really good once it's all polished. So how does the polishing part work? You have, you do three... Just different compounds, yeah. So the, what's the first compound the you first use? first compound is a heavy cut compound. I'll do a second, which is a finer cut, and then a polish, and then I'll go over it with a... So that's the second now? No, that's still the first. That's the first. So this is the first one here, heavy cut cleaner. Well, it looks shiny already. So the first one is this heavy cut cleaner, and is there a name for the other ones? This is just another 
medium cut compound. It's okay. just a medium cut. Then the other is just a strictly a polish or a fine cut. Okay. Fine cut. It just depends on the brand. So this is the medium cut. And that would be the polisher than this thing that here. That would be yeah, just polish. It doesn't really, it won't really take out any, any sharp scratches, but it'll take out any of the swirl marks that this other stuff puts in. Okay. Yeah, this the, is for cutting. Okay. Use it for your, any of your compounding. This is just a polishing, so you use it after the cut compound stage. If you bring your polishing stages afterwards. All right. Hey, so we're washing off the dirt here. Okay, so we're on to the second stage now. Second stage, yeah. Okay. Uh, we're done the compounding stage. Now on to the just the polish stage. Okay, so first was the heavy heavy cut, then uh, the heavy cut. Okay. Yeah, we used the heavy cut where it needed to be. Right. And used the medium cut over the whole thing. So what did you use medium. for the headlight? You said you did one headlight. Yeah, I did one headlight. Used a heavy cut compound on one headlight and didn't touch the other headlight. This is nice and shiny. Wow. You can't tell so much from far away, but up close you can really see the. Right. The well, this is really. This one. Okay, let's go to the other one here. See. Okay, that's a heavy cut. Now. A different pad. The last one that I'll put on by machine and then I'll go over it by hand. Okay. I'll hand wax it and get everything off. But this is the final, the final stage by machine. All right. It's just taking out any of the marks that the compounding left from the pad out. Right. And it just takes any of the fine swirl marks. Some colors, it's a way bigger deal than others. Uh -huh. This color's not particularly too bad, but like a black and stuff, you really got to make sure you pull out all the swirls that you left, right. compounding out with with this. It's a wax. Yeah. Just to clean it all off and make sure everything's shiny. All right. And I apply it by a rag because I don't like spraying it on. But I mean, it's made to spray. But mm -hmm. I just wipe it. Use a rag and wipe it. And then another rag and wipe it dry. Well, I think we'll speed things up a little bit again here for the final process of waxing. Okay, well, this looks pretty nice again here. So it's all been fixed, polished, and waxed, including the headlights. Walk around here. So that's it. Everything is done. The dent here looks really nice. Gerald did a very good job. The car looks nice and shiny again. All polished and waxed up and all that for a fraction of the price of what I would have paid at a body shop where they would have only done the dent and nothing of the none of the polishing or waxing even the headlights turned out really good unfortunately it doesn't show very well on the camera the before and after but believe me they are a lot better than they were before so that's it I hope you enjoyed this as much as I did I sure learned a lot from Gerald I also had some really bad scratches in the front here from a curb stone so Gerald offered to throw in the bumper as well 
and fix it at the same time that he was going to work on my dent in the back. Okay, tell me again, you sanded it with what? I um, sanded it down with 400 grit. 400 grit, okay. Okay, so this time you put the putty over top of the over top of the primer. Okay, so you can do yeah, actually a both. Minor imperfections. That's more designed for this than the other way around. Okay, I see. Just to fill more of the minor imperfections. Okay, so what's what's the advantage of putting it over the like in the back? You you put it over the uh, what you call it, the filler. I put it over the filler just because I had a large area of filler. This is okay. just minor scratches, so I just wanted to just in case if I need some fill on those scratches that the primer doesn't fill. This will uh, this will work in that case. All right. Okay, is it ready to sand, huh? Yeah, just gonna sand it down 400 grit. 400 grit. Okay, so we're gonna prime this again. Yep, give it a primer. Just because to just to make sure it's all uniform and even when I paint it. Alright. Unfortunately. Okay, so this is coat number what is Three. this? Three. So would that be pretty much it then? Three coats? Yeah. All right. Sand that down. And okay, so we're sanding down the, the last the coat of primer now. 800 grit. 800 grit. Okay, so the bumper's been sanded down with 800 grit and then 1500 on top of that. And we're about ready to paint again. By the time we got to the bumper in the front, it was pretty cool already and overcast. And so Gerald used a hair dryer to dry the individual coats of paint to speed things up a little bit. Okay, we're on to the clear, second coat of clear. So that'll probably be the final coat too, right? Yeah, it'll be a final. It doesn't need any more than this. Okay, so what was this? This was this was not a clear. This was just a solvent, just to fade down the edge, so you don't have a edge where the clear went. So it just blends into the old and the new. Okay.